All right, good afternoon everyone. I've done a few Ks today. So I've been over to Sam Machinery and I picked up a hose from there uh, for the rear of the spreader. And also took Ezra's bike over, it wasn't running right, took it to our mechanic in Kopu. And also picked up a ton I picked up a ton of urea from Balance on the way back at Netherton, so just got back, so I'm just putting some oil in here because it, it has used a little bit. So I need a probably, probably five litres, I'd say, in there. And then I've got to feed out to the cows and then um, ship them. They're grazing a new grass paddock at the moment. So I'm just giving them an hour and a half on there. I don't want them eating it down too hard. So Suzanne kindly shifted them for me while I was gone. Or Suzanne and Anders. Oh yeah, and I also got seed for the paddock just here. So what I'm actually planning on doing is shifting the cows to these two paddocks and get them to nibble it off again. So I'm going to feed out a bale of silage in there in a minute. Put them in there overnight, they can clean it off and then tomorrow morning I'll drill it. And then the guy that's been hiring our drill is taking the drill tomorrow. So yeah, a lot going on. I wouldn't normally gra um, drill grass this late but I just think it's worth it. There's enough moisture and it's warm enough at the moment. I think I'll take the risk just to um, get a bit more grass in there. That'll be enough. You can see the rain over there. Um, on the other side there's some real, real heavy showers that only last for a couple of minutes, they're just blowing through. So I think we're just catching the edge of it, it just sort of goes past like that. Because it's not very wet here. Suzanne so reckon it's been drizzling a little bit, but I don't think it's enough to wet the ground. Beautiful sunshine in between the showers. It's almost warm enough to take the jersey off again. We're gonna get him busy. But we're gonna go and get the cows now. So they're just over there grazing that new grass paddock. So they're gonna be coming right around into this paddock right beside the barn and the one at the back of the barn. Two paddocks there. So like I said, I'm gonna get them to graze that. And tomorrow I'll put some more base into that paddock. Because that paddock is originally base, it was done for turnips couple years ago I can't remember now so it's gone a bit patchy a lot of summer grass in it so come on come on come on come on come on come on they're pretty happy down there they might not want to shift come on girls come on come on come on I 
I don't think they're taking me serious on this little bike. But I'm being serious. The last paddock that I drilled's looking good. A lot of soft, well, you know, like flat weeds, you can see it growing there. Come on, where you go, girl? eating it down too hard they've left bits like that so that's what we want to see well that's what i want to see on the first grazing of new grass don't eat it down too hard so just so i explain what i was meaning before um with the the paddock i'm going to drill tomorrow so i wouldn't normally drill this late because i like to get my grass in nice and early so i can graze it with the milking cows so it's first grazing with the milking cows with this paddock so yeah, I'm sure it still grows, but the later you leave it, you know, the less grazing you're going to get. So, yeah, I like to try and get in early. So, normally around the 1st of March is the time where I want to get all my grass in, especially my permanent grass. Oh, they got some big bellies. So you always run the risk of um, nitro poisoning with grazing new grass. Uh, I like to um, either fill my cows up with another paddock so they've been in another paddock all morning and or else give them some silage. Um, yeah, so the main, the biggest risk is if you just put them straight on there. If they've had nothing else to eat and you put them in there, that's when you're gonna eat nitro poisonings generally or in my um, experience, so yeah. Beautiful afternoon. The annual is looking really good as well. So this paddock is the paddock that I sprayed out and drilled in the same day. Put Hogan into it. It's looking really good. A few patchy bits over there for whatever reason. So the once a day farmer was saying he had issues with slugs. You can see there's like areas like that where there's nothing. I don't know if Slugs, you know, there's bits over there along the edge. It would have been where there's against the long grass on the edge of the paddock. I don't know. But there's still plenty growing in there. But it also it may have been the the weather because we didn't get a lot of rain when I put this in, so I did talk about maybe there's sort of like two germinations where some germinated and then some was a bit slower to germinate after. I don't know. Growing anyways. I would say that it's actually ready for its first grazing or just I'll leave it a little bit longer. Still this crossing has seen no water. So we put this crossing in back in January, January, February. No water's been through it yet. So the only thing I've noticed so far is the fur's trickling out the front. I'm pretty sure I can drop that skirt down a bit more. It might just be a little bit high. And I think I need to push these skirts down a bit because it's dribbling out underneath. But otherwise, it's all going good. 
nothing's fallen off yet. a bit of oil out of the the bolt I fixed last time we had an oil leak here and it's leaking a bit out of there so I have to I have to put a new o-ring the o-ring would have gone again and, um, no, it's going well so me and Sadie thought we'd have a look at this plant and we done probably this time last year or a little bit later we planted heaps of flaxes in here, several lots of flaxes. Come over. We got flaxes. Cabbage trees. Cabbage tree there. We did try and transplant some totras but it looks like they've died. They were down in here. I can't see them. But we did transplant that one over there from my mum and dad's bush. Same with that one down there. This is a lemon wood put a sporum or whatever you want to call it. Another flax. I mean, cabbage tree, flaxes. We've got puri trees down there, there's, I think there's seven. One, two, three, four, five. And there's some over the other side. I think there might be six or seven puri trees. And I think I need to get in here and spray this blackberry. But you can see the flaxes are coming up through it, so, you know, it'll eventually it'll smother it out. And the birds, especially the tuis, love the, the flax seeds that come up, the flax flowers. There's quite a few seed heads sticking up. Shall we go and find the Peru trees over there? So this here was a tote tree, but it didn't survive. Flax is one of the easiest and cheapest things if you want to do a planting. So I'll um, take over slowly. Do you remember planting these flexes, Sadie? Yes. Do you remember planting these big ones? Yes. Yeah, we've done these when you were a bit younger. Yeah, they're quite big now, these flexes. I can see the prairie tree, Sadie. That's the one that me, well, me, Suzanne, and the kids planted. Right down here in the, the gorse. Just there. Prairie tree sticking its head up above the gorse. Yeah, so this is what the toys love, these seed heads. All right, climb back up. Oh, this. Hey, I thought we lost our puri tree, but there, there's one there. Look. Can you see it? Yeah. Just there. So we do have seven puri trees. Mm -hmm. Right, up you go. Yeah, the grass is long. What's that? The grass is long. Yeah, the grass is long, but the plants are coming up through it, eh? Shall we go down and back up? No! no. <laughs> okay, go that way. It's going to look good in a couple of years once everything gets a bit bigger. There's a lot of trees we planted across the top there. 
right against the fence and then below that we've got flaxes and then we've got other trees that we planted down the bottom there so it'll slowly fill it up and you can see it on that that ridge there at the bottom of that you can see a lot of them I'm not very good at remembering a lot of the names of plants apart from flaxes got that one down pat So these ones here, these ones here I believe we actually transplanted these from in mum and dad's bush. That one as well. There's a that's a ribbon wood. Pitosporum. I can't remember what there's heaps of plants here. I can't remember what those ones are called. Someone might be able to tell me. But yeah, a lot of plants through here. What do you reckon, Sadie? Does it look good? Where are you going? Are you going to roll down the hill? No. Alright, let's go up to the tractor. There's still a little bit of urea in there, so I'll do that tomorrow. Um, and then I need to tension the belt up again, because I thought it, it might go a bit loose and it looks like it has got a bit looser. And I need to push these skirts down, push them down and sort out that front one. Um, and then she should be all sweet. Oh, and I need to fix the leak on the tractor. So yeah. Um, yeah, but been very happy with uh, Sam Machinery. I'm not sponsored by them or anything, um, but they've provided a very good service. Um, great turnaround time getting that spread of sandblasted and you know fixed up and um, all done, as well as parts. Um, you can get any parts for that spreader and they have them on the shelf. Um, I went over and got the hose from them today, uh, as well as other times gone over and got the, the belt and other bits and pieces, the shaft. So yeah, very, very happy. They're a very good company. So yeah, it's great to support them. So yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. Cows are happy there, chilling out. So yeah, that's gonna be it for this video. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you somewhere else on the farm. See ya.